This video talks about radial nerve damage and all the clinical associations of radial nerve damage, the pathway it takes as it travels down, down from the arm and the forearm. So let's get right into it. So before we talk about radial nerve, um, when I first learned about nerves and where the damage, I always used to forget where the locations were. So I came up with this mnemonic called arm U. Okay, so A for axillary, which was at the at the neck of the radius, sorry, neck of the humerus. Um, R was the mid shaft fracture, which causes the radial nerve damage. Median nerve was the upper epicondyles, which is going to cause medial nerve damage, and lateral epicondyle damage causes ulnar nerve. So it's a general overview of all the major nerves that are in the um, arm. So specifically about radial nerve, radial nerve is famously fractured in the mid shaft, right? It is famously fractured in the mid shaft. And this location where radial nerve is usually fractured, this is called the spiral groove, okay? So this is the most famous position where radial nerve can be damaged. Now, but before it goes and becomes that radial nerve that we know of, it is going to divide before it enters the uh, before it enters the spiral groove. Okay? It's going to give a branch which we are going to, I'm just going to draw it like this. You know, just imagine that this is going behind this arm and this branch that it gives, the radial nerve gives off before it enters the spiral groove, we call it the posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm. So it's fair to say now that even though the radial nerve was damaged at mid shaft, right? It was it spared the posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm, right, on the extensor surface. So as a result, would it be fair to say that the cutaneous innervation of the arm is going to be intact? Absolutely, because the cutaneous branch divided way before radial nerve entered the spiral groove. Now as it is traveling through the radial nerve, the, through the spiral groove, at spiral groove, uh, the radial nerve gives up another branch, okay? Again, I'm drawing it like that, okay? And this, this innervation that it gives off, this is called the posterior cutaneous nerve of forearm. This was off arm, okay? So the posterior cutaneous nerve of arm is given above the spiral groove. The posterior cutaneous nerve of forearm is given at spiral groove. So take a closer look at what exactly is happening um, with our cutaneous branches. So imagine that this orange line is our radial nerve, which is obviously supplying the extensors. It's a very crude version, obviously, but this will help us understand. And the black area is our spiral groove. So above the spiral groove, so every time I'm going to draw a, a, a branch that's given off, I'm going to draw it with a different color for so that it's easier to understand. So what's happening above the spiral groove? It's giving off a superficial branch, okay, above the spiral groove. This particular one, which is given off um, above the spiral groove, is actually supplying the extensors of the arm, and it's giving us cutaneous, it's giving us cutaneous sensation of the arm, and we are calling it posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm, because it's supplying the cutaneous sensation of the arm, and this is given above the spiral groove, okay? But what about the forearm? Who is supplying the cutaneous sensation of the forearm? So what happens is, as the radial nerve is passing through the spiral group, it gives off a different nerve. Another nerve is given off, which goes and supplies the cutaneous sensation of the forearm. Okay? And we're calling it posterior cutaneous nerve of the forearm. And this is given at the level of spiral group. Um, the posterior cutaneous nerve of the arm is given above the level of the spiral groove. So let's say um, the radial nerve damage happens here. Are you going to have the cutaneous sensation of the arm intact of the extensors? 
obviously because it's not affected it's given above the spiral groove so let's continue with our radial nerve now so the radial nerve when it is passing through the lateral epicondyle so i'm going to go to this diagram when it's passing through the lateral epicondyle the lateral epicondyle is articulating with the head of the radius and that's exactly where the radial nerve is passing at this level it is also giving off another branch okay and that is the superficial branch and the one that it continues the radial nerve itself is the deep branch okay so the orange is the deep branch and the uh, and the pink is the superficial branch again come to this diagram so imagine that this is our uh, deep branch which is supplying the muscles of the extensors and it's also giving off a superficial branch okay and we're going to call it the superficial radial nerve now the superficial radial nerve is supplying the dorsum of the hand and which areas of the dorsum of the hand it's supplying the Three, first three and, a, three and a half fingers of the cutaneous sensation of the dorsum of the hand, right? The first three and a half of the dorsum of the hand, excluding the nail bed, obviously, because the nail bed is supplied by the median nerve. So this superficial branch is supplying the dorsum of the hand, first three and a half digits, and un, until it reaches the nail bed, excluding the nail bed, and the deep branch of the radial nerve is supplying the extensor surface, the extensors of the forearm. So now let's talk about the clinical correlations of the different places uh, radial nerve can be damaged. So it can be damaged at the axilla, okay? It can be damaged at mid shaft, and it can be damaged at the radial head. In axilla, it's usually damaged when someone falls asleep with their arms hanging on the on the on the handle of the chair. It puts pressure on the radial nerve on the axilla, and it can cause uh, radial nerve damage. Uh, the same thing can happen if there is a mid shaft fracture, and um, and then the last one is it happens at the radial head when there is subluxation of the radial head. So what happens is, let's say a child is playing. And you know the child is incorporative, and you want to pull on the child's arm like so. This can sublux their radial head, okay? And this can cause uh, damage to the radial nerve at the level of the radial head. So that can also happen. So we have damage in the axilla, we have mid shaft, and we have subluxation damage at the radial at the location of the radial head. Uh, some of the signs of um, radial nerve injury is that we are going to see uh, wrist drop because the extensors are not working, right? We're going to see wrist drop. So that's one of the signs that we're going to see. And depending on where the damage is, for example, if the damage is in the axilla, then you're going to see loss of sensation of the arm and forearm because it has not, you know, given that cutaneous branch, right? But if it is damaged at the level of the mid shaft, then the arm cutaneous branch is fine. It's just the it's just the the radial nerve and the superficial cutaneous branch of the forearm is going to be damaged. But if it is at the level of the radial head, then even the cutaneous branch of the forearm is going to be fine. The only thing that's going to be affected is the extensors, the extensors of the forearm, and also the ex also the sensation of the dorsum of the of the hand the first three and a half digits of the dorsum of the hand excluding the nail bed um, is going to be affected the sensation not and also the the motor action is also going to be affected if if the damage is at the radial head so I'm going to say that one more time because I feel like I may have you know just not have been clear so if you have damage at the at the radial head then you're going to lose sensation at the dorsum of the hand for the first three and a half digits, you're also going to lose muscle action of the, of the forearm. So that is my interpretation of the radial nerve.